Beneath 11,000 meters of crushing darkness, a race is unfolding that could redefine global power. For decades, the Mariana Trench was a frontier of forgotten explorers. Now, a single discovery is rewriting the rules. In this discovery in the Mariana Trench will transform geopolitics, you'll see why China's relentless push into these unmapped depths is sending shockwaves through science and security. But what have they found down there? And why is the world suddenly on edge? The answer begins at the very bottom. At nearly 11,000 meters below the surface, the Mariana Trench is a world apart from anything found on land. The pressure here exceeds 1,100 times what we experience at sea level, enough to crush a nuclear submarine like an empty soda can. Temperatures hover between one and four degrees Celsius, barely above freezing and sunlight never reaches these depths. Instead, the trench is shrouded in perpetual darkness, a place where even the most advanced lights vanish within meters. The seafloor itself remains a mystery. Despite decades of effort, most of the trench is still unmapped, its contours hidden beneath kilometers of water. The Challenger Deep, the trench's lowest known point, drops farther than Mount Everest stands tall. Every square meter is shaped by forces that would destroy ordinary machines in seconds. Here, water is so dense, it behaves almost like a solid, and the chemical makeup of the environment challenges every known form of life. Sensors and equipment must withstand conditions that push the limits of engineering. Even today, vast stretches of the trench remain untouched, their secrets locked away by a combination of darkness, cold, and unrelenting pressure. This is not just the planet's deepest point, it is its most hostile frontier. In 1960, the Bathyscaf Trieste carried Jacques Picard and Don Walsh to the Challenger Deep, reaching a depth of 10,916 meters. Their vessel, little more than a reinforced steel sphere suspended beneath a gasoline-filled float, withstood the crushing pressure for just 20 minutes on the sea floor. The entire mission cost the U.S. Navy roughly half a million dollars at the time, about five million today, yet it was a one-off feat, no follow-up dives, no ongoing program. The Trieste was retired and the trench remained silent for decades. Half a century later, filmmaker James Cameron descended alone in the Deep Sea Challenger. In 2012, his submersible touched the bottom at 10,908 meters. Seven years of engineering and a personal investment of nearly $10 million made this possible. Possible. Cameron's dive captured vivid footage and samples, but the submersible was used only once for a full-depth mission before being donated to a museum. The high cost and technical hurdles made repetition nearly impossible. Between 2019 and 2024, explorer Victor Vescovo and his team broke this pattern. Their sub, the limiting factor, was engineered for multiple deep dives, over a dozen missions across the world's trenches. The Five Deeps expedition cost more than $35 million, assembling a private fleet and a global roster of scientists. Yet, even with this scale, the operation depended on a single sponsor's fortune and an elite engineering team. Each of these expeditions pushed technical boundaries, but all shared the same limits. Immense cost, immense risk, and no path to routine exploration. For decades, the trench belonged only to those willing to gamble everything for a brief moment at the bottom. China's deep sea program now operates at a tempo that would have seemed impossible just a decade ago. In 2020, the Fenduja submersible completed its first manned dive to 10,909 meters. Since then, it has logged more than 60 dives per year, with some campaigns pushing that number even higher. The old model of rare heroic descents has been replaced by routine sorties managed by teams from the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the Institute of Deep Sea Science and Engineering. These engineers have built a system where a single submersible can spend 8 to 12 hours at the bottom, return to the surface, and be ready for another mission within days. But the real leap came with the arrival of autonomous robots. By 2024, fleets of shoebox-sized machines began crawling the trench floor, each one equipped with AI navigation and real-time data links. Some robots now remain on the seafloor for weeks at a time, mapping, sampling, and relaying information back to support ships circling above. 
During major expeditions, as many as a dozen autonomous vehicles can operate simultaneously, covering thousands of square kilometers in a single campaign. The support ships themselves spend more than 160 days a year at sea, launching and recovering vehicles in a steady cycle. This relentless pace has redefined what it means to own the deep. Instead of one-off dives, China's program delivers persistent presence, a kind of industrial tempo that transforms the trench from a remote curiosity into a working frontier. The ability to return again and again is what turns discovery into control. For the first time, the Mariana Trench is being treated not as an impossible destination, but as a space that can be monitored, mapped, and ultimately managed. Beneath the crushing weight of the trench, the seafloor hides a wealth that has drawn the eyes of governments and corporations alike. Cold seeps, where methane and hydrogen sulfide bubble from the earth, support entire ecosystems without a ray of sunlight. But these seeps also signal the presence of methane hydrates, crystalline ice cages trapping vast stores of natural gas. Energy analysts call it fire ice for good reason. A single cubic meter can hold over 160 cubic meters of methane. In theory, these deposits could power nations. In practice, disturbing them risks disaster. Destabilizing hydrate layers can trigger underwater landslides, unleashing sudden methane plumes that race toward the surface and threaten to accelerate global warming. Scattered across the abyssal mud are polymetallic nodules, potato-sized lumps rich in cobalt, nickel, manganese, and copper. These metals are the backbone of batteries, wind turbines, and electric vehicles. Some stretches of the trench floor contain nodules with metal concentrations far exceeding the richest terrestrial mines. For resource-hungry economies, the incentive is clear. Unlocking these deposits could loosen the grip of current suppliers and redraw the map of global trade. But every extraction method comes with a price. Mining machines churn up thick sediment plumes, smothering fragile life that may have taken millions of years to evolve. Recovery from such disturbance is not measured in decades, but in geological timescales. As benthic ecologists warn, the trench's living tapestry is easily torn and nearly impossible to mend. The promise of seafloor treasure is inseparable from the threat of irreversible loss. In early 2025, a Chinese deep-sea robot descended more than 8,000 meters into the heart of the Mariana Trench. Its mission was not scientific sampling, but a live demonstration. The robot located a fiber optic cable and, under remote command, manipulated it on the ocean floor. Experts traced the event to a stretch of seafloor just west of Guam, a region where dozens of cables converge, carrying nearly all digital traffic between Asia and North America. At these depths, traditional cable repair ships are useless. Only a handful of nations possess the technology to even reach the site, let alone perform operations. The demonstration sent shockwaves through security communities worldwide. For the first time, a state had shown the ability to tamper with or repair critical data infrastructure at the bottom of the world's deepest trench. Policymakers in Washington and Tokyo scrambled to assess the vulnerability of their networks. The message was clear. The digital arteries of the global economy now run through a choke point that can be reached and potentially severed by those who control the deep. China is now preparing to anchor a permanent research station two kilometers beneath the surface a feat no other nation has attempted at these depths. The planned habitat, designed to house six scientists for up to 30 days at a stretch, will function as a living laboratory, monitoring environmental changes, testing new robotics, and coordinating seafloor operations in real time. The technical challenge is immense. Every system from life support to communications must withstand pressures that would flatten a steel oil drum in seconds. Yet, the funding behind this project is just as staggering. Construction and initial deployment alone are expected to cost over $200 million, with annual operating budgets approaching $80 million per base. In stark contrast, the United States Premier Ocean Agency, NOAA, faces a shrinking budget, just $45 million allocated for deep ocean exploration in 2024, with no plans for a permanent trench-level base. As China's investment surges, U.S. labs have closed or merged, 
and top ocean engineers have begun to leave for better funded programs abroad. The balance of power is shifting below the waves, not through a single breakthrough, but through the relentless accumulation of resources, infrastructure, and talent. The Mariana Trench is becoming less a frontier and more a foothold, one nation's to occupy while others watch from the surface. In 2024, China's deep sea robot fleet logged over 60 dives in the Mariana Trench, a number unmatched by any other nation. This turning point marks the shift from rare heroic expeditions to routine state-backed presence at the ocean's deepest frontier. The documentary has shown that the trench is more than a scientific wonder. It holds rare metals, methane hydrates, and vital internet cables, resources, and infrastructure now within reach. Yet, not all is known. Key environmental impacts of deep sea mining remain unstudied, and the full extent of military capabilities in the region is classified. Today, China's investment far outpaces US funding for ocean science, raising clear questions about who will set the rules below the waves. The evidence is clear. Control of the deep sea is moving from aspiration to reality. What nations do next will shape global resources, security, and the fate of one of Earth's last untouched places.